hello, coming from my kitchen today. Not super clean and organized, but we're just gonna like get through it. <laughs> I'm doing something a little different today. I'm gonna unpack my Misfits Market. I can't even say it. I have a little bone to pick with them. I'm thinking of canceling, but I'm gonna go through what I got today and also bring out some of the other things I've picked up for school lunches because I'm getting prepared and getting in the mindset. But this video is gonna cover like snacks and lunches and things to think about when you're packing. And it's really directed towards new parents, new foster parents, new kinship parents. Maybe you're jumping in, you're a step parent and you haven't parented a school age kid before and it's the school year so we gotta think about lunches. You know, kids who are going through a lot, maybe come from a hard beginning or going through a crisis, it can really impact what they eat, how they eat, especially at school. Also, neurodivergent kids have a lot of considerations. And sometimes we don't know all this stuff about our kids that we're caring for. Ugh. That's what makes it hard. So, okay, I have been a customer of Imperfect Foods Misfits Market, that they changed it for many years. And they just came out with like this, like, yearly costs, yearly member pricing. I don't know, I'm not into it. Um, I feel like we should just be getting the best prices. We pay for the delivery, whatever. So I don't know, we might be trying something else. Okay, I got these pretzel rolls. Our kids really like these. And I like that it has six grams of protein. And these can be like plopped in with a yogurt, fruit, veggies, and that's sort of what kids may eat. You know, the bread products can feel so safe and comforting to a lot of kids, especially in like really stressful situations like lunchtime at school. Sometimes bread is really easy to eat. Okay, so I like the pretzel bread. You're gonna see a theme. More bread. <laughs> These are pancakes. So they're like pre syruped ready to eat from Bakerly. Kids really like these too. This can be good if your kid maybe sleeps in, misses breakfast, refuses breakfast. It's something that, to get them started. Um, obviously, we would prefer a more nutritious, well-rounded breakfast, but sometimes in really crisis moments, we're, we just want kids to have some calories and get through the day. Okay, these are also really good. They're crepes with chocolate in them. Kids are like these. Okay, and then I've, I, got, I get a ton of produce from Imperfect or Misfits, sorry. It's been called Imperfect for so long. I'm actually gonna save a lot of the produce because the kids like to help clean it and prep it, which I also think is an opportunity to try things and taste things. So especially if a kid in your home doesn't have a lot of experience with fruits and veggies or just you know a variety, having them help you prep and clean can be a really nice way to for them to like engage with the food, try the food, low pressure, they're gonna see you eat it. So a lot of this, I'm not gonna wash right now. Oh, and I got a big old thing of cherries. So I also like to look for like whole fruits that can be packed in its wholeness for lunches. And the reason is like apples, strawberries, cherries, sort of maintains its freshness a little bit better than cutting it up. Of course, if you're concerned about choking or kids have like specific desires, you might need to cut up anyways. So like pea pods, another like whole thing that can be eaten. It doesn't need to be cut up. It also just makes things easier for you if you're prepping or if a kid is packing their own lunch, they don't have to get the knives out. You know, as foster parents, maybe kinship through foster care, you do have to keep things locked up in the kitchen. So I'm always like very aware of what do I need a knife for? I'm gonna, yeah, I got a ton of good stuff here. And then obviously some things for our meals, our dinners. And I get like pasta. I don't drink alcohol. I have migraines and it's a trigger and I gave it up a couple years ago. But I love kombucha. So I, I get a lot of the fancy drinks from them because I have them in the evening and it's sort of nice special drink. So yeah, like this one. So many things I've never heard of. I don't even know. This is like a berry lemonade sparkling coconut water. Who knows? I love to try new things like this. Okay, they also have these delicious chocolate covered pretzels as like a little goodie for anyone in the house, but the kids like these and I'll throw them in the lunches. And they also have a lot of like um, easier ready to eat type meals. So like these, you know, burger patties that you can easily just grill up. Sometimes they have like new and unique things like this one, fettuccine with chicken and Alfredo sauce sort of like ready to eat. I don't know, we'll try it. You're gonna laugh at how many of these things I have. So like this is pancakes ready to eat. 
again, the mornings can be very stressful as this big transition and change happens. And we always offer, you know, juice, hard boiled eggs, that's easy, oatmeal, all those things are part of it too. So just because I'm getting a ton of sweets, please know. Because I know the internet hates when I talk about this stuff, but I'm also realistic and want it to be low stress in the morning at home, getting ready, you know, we start to change things as the weeks go on. This is just what we do. I'm just being honest. And you know, we do what we can. I have oranges, bananas. There's so many of those things that we build in. You know, sometimes we grab those things for the car or I'll pack snacks for their morning snack to get some more protein and fruits and veggies in. And it's a process and we got to start somewhere. Okay, I love these for me though. These are little snacking cheeses. That's mozzarella and they're so good. There's like three little balls. <laughs> there you go. And these are for me. If the kids want to eat it, fine. But I always offer it to them and they don't want them. And I'm like, that's fine. More for me. And I just started getting this one. Peach oolong tea. I don't know what that is. I need to look that up. But this is delicious. So if we stop this, I will miss this tea. Okay. They pack everything in these like refrigerated freezer bags. There's like big freezer things in here. And I like it because you can... um send them back. So every Monday we put this out on the front step and they take the old one and give us a new one. The boxes are also like very sturdy. If you know, you know. <laughs> Essentially, they want us to pay a yearly fee and that will allow us to access discounted prices. So now I'm questioning like, are they just going to increase the prices for everything to get people to purchase the yearly membership? I don't know. I know that other places, I'm pretty sure other delivery services do this too. So I don't think I'm going to get around it, but I'm pretty happy, but I'm not so happy with that new change they're making. Okay. I'm going to put all this stuff away and I'm going to show you some other things we got from the grocery store that we'll be using for lunches. Okay. Let's talk about containers and drinks. So I have become pretty brand loyal not sponsored, not an ad, whatever. I'm gonna probably put up an affiliate link maybe for Amazon, but I love this brand of lunch lunch boxes and snack packs. So this is Cerboni. I don't know, this is what it looks like. We just got this one and I love that they are so insulated. So our kids go to a school that has a lot of outdoor spaces and lunch boxes might be sitting outside and so they can get really hot. So insulation is really important. And they also have these little snack things that are super insulated too. They also come in with like pockets so you can add more insulation. I love these. You can throw them in the freezer the night before. I love these lunch boxes. Of course, your kids have to like them too. As they get older, they may have more opinions. So there's that. In terms of Tupperware and like bento boxes, this brand, Sistema, is my favorite. So this is like my favorite bento box, whatever. I find that the super, hold on, let me show you. Okay. I find that these things from Target, like this, they're fine, but hard to open and close. And then I find that these that are more sectioned off, also hard to open and close, not necessarily spill proof. I just, it's hard for kids to handle. I don't love these. I don't know. Maybe I'll return to these when kids are older or I'll use them, but I don't know. The, this is what I like. So just sharing. This is the brand. I like that this has a little tray so you can put multiple items. It's not leak proof per se. Like I would not put something wet in these. I would use smaller containers like these. Like if I'm doing dressing. Also, I got these at Target. These Any brand of the tiny things are fine, but definitely pick up some tiny ones. Also, these come, you know, in larger sizes as well. And I find that if it's like a smaller looking container, it feels less overwhelming for kids like my gosh this is so much fruit in those like really big containers so if you put things in a smaller container it might just feel less overwhelming and more approachable but dips and dressings i live by them and swear by them i remember when we first got licensed as foster parents i was on this like one hour long call with for level of care assessment. And I was, you know, talking about their eating needs. And the person on the call was like, listen, I've been a parent for many years. And here's the trick. Ranch, ketchup, barbecue sauce, whipped cream, butter, mayo, something will work for the kids, test them all out. And 
she was right. Not all kids, of course, but a lot of kids, when you add in a dip dressing or sauce, it does help them eat more foods. It makes it a little bit, everything a little bit more familiar. So I invest in lots of tiny storage. Okay, also that I, you know, within the lunchbox, is a place for connection. So, you know, we talk a lot about these transitions being really hard for kids. And so sometimes having a point of connection is a helpful moment for the child in their busy day. So I do this in a number of ways depending on the kid. So sometimes I'll just write a note on a piece of paper. I also use these like scratch off notes just for kids who maybe can't read or early readers. You could just draw a picture like a heart, an ice cream cone, a cupcake, a smiley face. I heart you. Just their name with like swirly letters. Anything like that is like a moment from you. And I also like to pick up these like pre-done. These are jokes. And that can be good for like an older kid who maybe doesn't want to see a handwritten note from me. But just leaving like a little joke could be, you know, a moment for them. Like Lara thought of me. You can include a picture of you and the child. That can be really helpful. I also love to include stickers. This is my favorite sticker company. I got this like pack of four or five from Amazon. It's Fashion Angels, but they're like the most adorable stickers. Super high quality. Sometimes I'll pull off a whole page or I'll decorate some of the boxes and containers with stickers. Again, it's just like a friendly moment. You know, lunchtime, is loud it's hot or cold or it's stuffy there's friendship troubles there's just a lot happening maybe they took a bad math test in the morning and now their tummy hurts and like nothing feels good and so a moment of connection can help a little you know it may not encourage them to eat the whole lunch but it could give them a moment of connection and feel a little bit better um okay so that's my connection point <laughs> Okay, for drinks, I also sort of, you know, have worked through and tried a lot of different things. So these are my favorite protein shakes. They're for kids. You can get them at Costco for a really good deal. If you sign up for the subscribe and save on Amazon, it's a good deal because they can get pricey. It's chocolate milk, eight grams of protein. It's a really nice shake. It obviously has vitamins, minerals, you know, all in here. And sometimes kids have trouble eating but they can drink and so this could be a good option i don't know i find it to be really helpful and kids seem to like this more than the insurer or not the insurer the pediasure for kids you know sometimes they may need to gain weight this is 180 calories you would probably get more calories from other drinks but it can be a nice supplement of course there's juices some kids like a ju juice box it's what they're used to and maybe other kids have it, helps them fit in. Apple juice, or I sometimes get those little orange juices. Okay, but I like these containers for a variety of reasons. So first of all, they're like insulated. Sometimes I'll put like a sticker with their name on it. And I pre-fill them and put them in the fridge. So I have like 10 of these in the fridge. So there's always a cold water ready to go. So if you're running out of the house and you're like, grab a water, they can get a cold water. Also, during a dysregulation or a meltdown, sometimes a sip of cold water can really ground a child and you during a moment. And so always having cold water ready to go has been really helpful for us. I hope it helps you. I just like these because they're smaller, they're not too heavy, and they fit in these side carrying things in the lunch boxes for drinks. There you go. Okay, and you can get the other water bottles, bottles too, of course, we send lots of options. Some kids prefer to just eat, drink from the water fountain because it's cold and that's what other kids do. And then lastly, these are, they come with juice at the grocery store and we keep them and reuse them. So they're, the plastic type is two, like number two. And when I looked it up, I found that it is re reusable. Like you can fill it up and drink it again and dishwasher safe. And so sometimes for younger, littler ones who maybe are in, preschool, TK, transitional kindergarten, kinder, sometimes first grade or older. They're not great at keeping track of their things. These are a little bit more disposable. I wouldn't really consider them disposable, but less precious, not as much money. We've already used them for the juice. We use them for water. I like them because they don't like a uh, drip. So 
you can they can go sideways, upside down. You can keep them in beds. So if you have kids that really need water close, they're little and maybe can't manage a cup or a water bottle next to their bed. Kids who maybe are a little bit older for a bottle but still looking for a bottle, this could be an option in bed with them for water. Um, so you can send these to school too because if they go missing or you know accidentally get thrown away because that happens too, it's less of an ordeal than some of those expensive water bottles. I remember one year, I think we went through six water bottles and I'm like, we're not doing that again. So that's what I like for this piece. Let me pull out some more things to show you. All right, so, so some kids may not want to eat like a big lunch, like a sandwich, peanut butter and jelly, turkey sandwich, or like a mac and cheese, like that big main course. I find that a lot of kids find that, you know, it's not as approachable. The, the temperature and consistency has to be exactly right. And a lot of things can happen to the lunch before they sit down and eat. And so sometimes we just have to put a bunch of snacks in that kind of cover off on everything, you know, for a well-rounded meal. And we're just excited when they try everything or eat something. And so here are some of the things that we've collected. You know, we really like to send yogurts, again, with that well-insulated bag. And the kinds that have the little treats or the Chobani flips are really good. Again, make them a little bit more exciting. And I find that with these types of things, kids will eat them and open them. Yes, sometimes they just eat the M&Ms. I would probably stop buying that if that happened. But I find that, you know, they mix it in and eat it. I like these little snack packs, especially if you need something on the go for like a visit. Um, these can be easily thrown in a bag. Or you can make your own. Here. Sometimes I use like divided containers like this to make my own Lunchables. But I also, you're going to cringe. I do buy the Lunchables too. And maybe you're not going to cringe because you understand. But sometimes kids are used to eating this and it's friendly for them. It, it tastes how they expect it to taste every single time. And that's what they're going to eat. And sometimes we just meet kids where they're at. I do like to try to introduce other things along the way. That might be for our time at home for breakfast and dinner or the weekends. School lunch, I usually don't pack a, lo a lot of the new things unless I'm really sure that they're going to be able to eat it or want to eat it. They're very expensive for what you get. So I do like to make my own if kids will eat that with just like Ritz or Club crackers, pepperoni. You can get little cutters for the meat like this. So I have these little, like this is a Mickey Mouse shape and a little circle flower shape. You can do that with the bologna turkey ham. It makes it a little bit more friendly. You can make your own Lunchable in like some type of package like this. Again, these are not like water leak proof. So just put like Lunchable type things in this. But I love little mini naan breads. They also come in like a, a larger circle size. Lots of kids I find like these, that can work. But again, we are trying to give kids things that they will eat. And sometimes this is all they're going to eat. And again, we have work to do to introduce more options, more balance in their diet. But I always pick up, especially for those first few weeks, some things that I know that they're going to eat and they're going to be excited about. Cereal is another thing that feels safe for a lot of kids. You can buy like individual cereals, but sometimes I'll just put things in a baggie and you know, that's okay too. I've even gotten little milks and sent a bowl and kids will make cereal for their lunches. That's fun for them. And we typically go grocery shopping together. I highly recommend that because then you'll get to know the things that they're really excited about that they want to eat. And yes, it's going to be sweets. Like this year, the kids picked out Rice Krispie treats and then these little animal iced animal crackers. So they picked them out. I'll put them in. That's fine. And I'm glad that they're excited for something. <laughs> Any point that they can engage in the process of choice and making their lunches, it's a really great starting point for them. Love the perfect bars. <laughs> these are great. This, especially if you have a kid that needs to gain weight, I find that these are really good. So this is pretty small and this is 130 calories. It has six grams of protein and this was recommended to us from a pediatric dietitian. 
and we've bought them ever since. So they come in a ton of different flavors, but I love these perfect bars. Made Good has some good granola bars and balls. You can find those at Costco. But here's the thing, you know, take your kids shopping with you. Let them pick things out. Even if you consider it junk or like not the healthiest thing, let them choose because we really want them to go into those first few weeks of school feeling confident. And when they sit down at lunch, they may not have friends or haven't made friends yet. Things may just feel different as they increase in grades. Maybe they're eating in a different place at a different time. It all just feels different. And then when you add on, you know, foster care or any type of situation that is traumatic or difficult or a crisis for a child, there's just so much going on. And if they're excited for the Rice Krispie treat and they're gonna eat it first, I'm just glad they're sitting down and eating. I'm good with that. And it used to feel a little bit more uncomfortable just sending the packaged snacks and getting the lunch back and all the fruit and veggies are still there, but the packaged snacks have been eaten. And I had a, a pediatric dietitian tell me like, chill, Lara, like you can supplement their diet and give them more nutrients and vitamins for breakfast, for snack time when they get home, for dinner, their late night snack. There's so many opportunities. And also you have the weekend, you have days off from school. There's so many opportunities to offer kids other foods that we got to kind of like put, take that pressure off a little, especially if you have a kid with an eating disorder, who's neurodivergent, who needs to gain weight. There's so many factors and don't let the noise of everyone else or the internet impact what's right for your kid in your home check with their doctor their pediatrician and you know get their advice and see what they need and cater to them in that way i always include like a fruit and a veggie or two fruits two veggies here are some of the things that i send obviously this is not everything it's just what i have on hand right now as i said earlier i try to find things that i don't have to like cut up and prepare because i find that when you keep it in its original form, it lasts a little bit longer through the day. It doesn't get as mushy or warm or change texture. So, you know, things like a whole banana, if a kid can peel it, that can be good to send. Things like plums that are a little bit easier to bite into, you know, apples as well. You can just put the whole thing in. Of course, if they need to cut up, I will. One little thing I found that worked for the apples is if you cut them up, and soak them in ice water for just a few minutes and then kind of pat them dry. They don't turn as brown as quickly. Um, of course, little carrots, cucumbers as well. I do cut those up into like little circles or little shapes. You can do broccoli with ranch dressing. Again, the pea pods with the ranch dressing or alone. Some kids will just eat them because they're pretty sweet. And grapes, although I do cut the grapes up a lot of times for the kids because choking. But if they're older kids, they usually can manage it. For strawberries, you can send them whole as well. Just, you know, I clean them first. And then I also will sometimes send salsa with tortilla chips in those little containers to dip in. And if kids are really into salsa, you can even make some of your own at home or you can explore all the different kinds of salsa. That can be fun for kids too. And the little cutie oranges, I do peel these, but they hold up pretty well in the lunches. But these are really hard for kids. Some older kids could probably manage it, but there is limited time at lunch. And so they may spend the whole lunch like peeling and taking all the little pieces off. So may or may not be a fit for you. Okay, I think I talked about everything. Make sure you're asking your school when they have lunch, when they have snack, that can kind of help you plan out in terms of refrigeration and how long things are going to last in their lunches. You, then you also have a sense for snack after school. How many hours has it been um, since they've had lunch? And for some kids who have an IEP, sometimes there can be accommodations related to lunch, such as eating in a separate place, a quiet area, an air conditioned area, eating with a one-on-one -on -one aid. If you have a child who takes medication that impacts their appetite, you can sometimes have your doctor or psychiatrist write in the form that they will need access to snacks and that can be accommodated by the school. I will put together like a little Tupperware with, that's labeled with the kid's name and keep that at the nurse's station so that when they come in for their medication, they can grab a snack or sit and eat a snack. 
that can be helpful too. It's good to kind of think through all of those things. If you're not sure how your child's medication impacts their appetite, make sure you're asking their psychiatrist, their pediatrician, the pharmacist, because some impact appetite a lot. Either it makes them feel hungry all day and they need, you know, constant snacks or lots of different snacks throughout the day. Some medications diminish the appetite. And so really getting them to eat is harder. They may be feeling fatigued or getting headaches because they're not eating as much because they don't feel hungry. And that's because of the medication. So there's a lot of things to consider that can factor into the day when we are not there. And so thinking through all those pieces, connect with the special ed department at your school, the school nurse, get their feedback, get them involved, and see if there are little points throughout the day to support your kids eating at school. And lastly, I'll just add that it is important to reflect and talk to your child. So what worked well, what didn't work well, and make sure you stay super neutral. We wouldn't want to punish or make them feel bad about not eating. That can lead to kids lying or throwing things away without telling you. And so you really don't know what they're eating. Um, and so just having an open and honest conversation about what's working, what's tasting good, what's, what are they getting sick of. Joining, having them join you in the kitchen can also be really great. It's a nice bonding activity to make your school lunch. And then they get to choose. And when they're throwing in the candy, you know, try to stay neutral because we're glad that they are taking initiative, that we are working together to put together a lunch. So that's a great point to educate kids on how they need sugar, yes, but also protein, fiber, and all the different vitamins and different types of food throughout the day. It's an opportunity to teach them more about their nutritional needs. Okay. That was a lot, but I hope that was helpful. <laughs> I'm exhausted from making that. So let me know what questions do you have? And yeah, I'm here in support and I hope this school year starts off really strong for you and your family.